We're going to be in Psalm chapter 103, if you want to turn there, Psalm chapter 103. And if you don't know, this is one of my favorite sermons uh, to preach and to meditate on and reflect on. Um, It's one that the Lord gave me a long time ago, but it keeps ringing true. And uh, I call it the bad business deal. The bad business deal, I think probably the worst deal in all of history. And somehow I got to be a part of it and gain all the benefits from it. And uh, as you'll see, heard of a story, maybe you heard of this one too. There's an elderly lady, well known for her faith and her boldness and talking about it in her neighborhood. She would stand out on her front porch and shout, praise the Lord. And next door to her lived an atheist who would get so angry at her proclamations, he would shout, there ain't no Lord. And uh, she would say, praise the Lord. He would say, there ain't no Lord. A hard time set in on the elderly lady, and she prayed for God to send her some assistance. She stood on her front porch and cried out to God, saying, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, God, I need food. I'm having a hard time. Please, Lord, send me some groceries. The next morning, the lady went on her porch and saw a large bag of groceries and shouted, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Well, the neighbor jumped out from behind the bushes and said, Ha ha, I told you, there there ain't no Lord. I bought those groceries and put them on your porch. God didn't do that. The lady started jumping up and down and clapping as loud as she had, saying, Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. He not only sent me groceries, but he made the devil pay for them. (laughs) It's just a joke. (laughs) Psalm 103, the bad business deal. Most believe this psalm was written in King David's later years, for since his tasting of the great love for being forgiven by the grace of God at a great degree, David also realized his weak frame in his older years. He's not the giant slayer anymore, but he's an older king who has been through many trials and sees the Lord with different eyes than he did when he was younger. The great Charles Haddon Spurgeon, the prince of preachers, said about this psalm as, in the lofty Alps some peaks rise above others, so among even the inspired psalms there are heights of song which overtop the rest. This 103rd psalm has ever seemed to us to be the Mane Rosa of the divine chain of mountains of praise, glowing with a ruddier light than any of the rest. It is as the apple tree amongst the trees of the wood. It is the golden fruit that has flavor such as no fruit ever bears unless it has been ripened in the full sunshine of mercy. To him who is forgiven much, loves much. And we know that David was forgiven a lot. He did some heavy things. He was the giant slayer, but we also know that he was the adulterer and the murderer. He did some terrible things. And now he's on the other side in his old age, and he writes this psalm. And really, it's so beautiful watching him pour out his heart to how grateful he is to God for what he has done. There's too much in this psalm for a thousand pens to write. It is one of those all-comprehending scriptures, which is a Bible in itself. And it might alone almost suffice for the hymn book of the church. God has made a deal with man. And I think on paper, when you map it out, it might be the worst business deal in all of HIP's history, or perhaps the most amazing deal in all of history. Allow me to explain. David sings. Remember, he's singing. Verse 1 of Psalm 103, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me, bless his holy name. He commands his own soul to bless God. There are seasons in the Christian life and Through some of these seasons, we don't feel like blessing God. Have you ever been there? Sometimes it's summertime, right? When everything is happy and fun and exciting spiritually. And then fall starts to come around and things begin to change. Like, what's going on here spiritually? Things are changing. Then wintertime shows up where everything is dead and cold. You're like, God, are you even there? I don't even feel you. I don't sense anything. Are you still there? We need to know that springtime is just around the corner where things are new and fresh and exciting. Through all these seasons, we should keep commanding our souls to bless God regardless of how we feel. This is what David's doing. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Hey, soul, listen up. You bless God today. 
all that is within me bless his holy name. We walk by faith, not by feeling, because when we worship him, we see him for who he is, and we remind ourselves of the greatness of his love and the greatness of his perfect plan in our lives. We are reminded of all of this, all of his promises. Psalm 34, 1, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul, I shall make her boast in thee, Lord. The humble will hear thereof and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. David proclaims, I will bless the Lord at all times. And David goes on to convince his soul of why he should bless the Lord. That's why I love this psalm. Sometimes our soul needs convincing, reminding of the greatness of our king and who he is and what he's done. And sometimes you may even command yourself, bless God, and you don't feel like it. You're like, I don't know if I can bless God right now. All you got to do is read through this psalm. It'll change you real quick. Look at verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul. He says it again, and forget not all of his benefits. When I say the word benefits, what do you think about? Have you ever thought about all the benefits you get from a company you work for? You know, the health benefits, the eye care, the dental plan, the 401k, the matching. And if you get into a really good company, life insurance and shares in the company, you know, the benefits, the bennies, right? The goods. Some companies don't give benefits at all, but do you know about the benefits that God gives? When you come into contact with him, when you come into a relationship with him, when you go into business with him, you know what kind of benefits you get with God? They're unbelievable benefits. I'm going to share a few. Think about all the benefits and promises God has given his people. Philippians 4.19, And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches and glory. Not according to your riches. According to his. Do you know that God's bank account doesn't drop when he provides financially for his people? He doesn't like go down. Oh no, I had to take care of that family. Got angels, are we going to do okay? Overdraft protection in place? (laughs) No. His account never drops. He will provide for you as his son. He will provide for you as his daughter. He takes care of his kids. And he will take care of us. He pays the bills, not us. That's above our pay grade. That's the CEO's problem. The boss's problem. He owns the church, not us. He takes care of his kids. Romans 8.28. The next benefit, we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to them who are called according to his purpose. He works all things for good. Did you know that? No bad days. He's working it all for good. He actually is. Feels like a bad day though. You need to know he's actually working even all of the bad days ultimately for good. Even those things trying to tear you down, he's working it for good. How do we know? Look to the cross. Look to the cross of Christ. Look who was trying to tear the Lord Jesus down. They tore him down on the cross, but God brought the greatest good in all of history in the darkness and pain of the cross. In the suffering of the cross, he brought salvation to the world. It blew open the doors of heaven, calling all of the world to come in. Is anyone thirsty? Is anyone hungry? Come to the feast. The food's free, everything's free, salvation has been provided. Jesus has made a way for you to go to God. God is working it all for good to those who love him and those called according to his purpose. He will get his way, trust him, he has promised us it's a benefit from him. How about the benefit of this? Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, he's, God says to you, come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. You, you come to me and I'll give you rest. Jesus told us my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You know about the priests of Zadok and Ezekiel 44? God told them three things. Your only job is to minister to me. You are never, you're only allowed to wear linen. You can't wear wool. It's got to be light. It's got to be nice. No sweating in there. And he also told them this. Your inheritance, you don't get any land. You know what your inheritance is? It's me, God says. I am your inheritance, and I give you myself. The the one who owns everything. Come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. This is what he did for his priests. Look at his benefits. 
Philippians 4, 7, And the peace of God, which surpasses understanding, will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Peace of God. He can download the peace of God into your heart and mind to guard your heart so far that it will surpass your own understanding. You don't have to understand the situation fully. You just magically have peace in the situation. I don't know why I have peace, but I sense that God is near, and I sense that he's carrying me through, and I sense that this is going to work out. I don't have to fully understand I don't understand, Lord, but I have peace in you. Man, you can't buy that on Amazon, huh? It's only found in our God. Spurgeon said God promises to keep his people, and he will keep his promise. You can't buy the benefits of God. Did you know that? You can't even negotiate them. He just gives them to you for free. He just gives it all. Forget not all of his benefits. How can we not bless the Lord? David says, bless the Lord. O my soul, all that is within me, bless his holy name. Verse 3, who forgives all your iniquity. Another benefits. God forgives all your iniquities. Did you know that? You mean all of them? Like every single one. Yes, every single one. Iniquity is a fancy word for intentional, deliberate, in-your-face sin. All we've got to do is look to the cross. Christ took our punishment so we could go free. Even that thing you're having a hard time forgiving yourself for, God says forgiven. Forgiven and paid for, done. I don't see you that way. We know we're not worthy to be used greatly by God, but he loves to use the broken and contrite heart because he gets all the glory. He's going to keep forgiving you and loving you no matter what. Did you know that? All the days of your life, he'll never stop forgiving you. He'll never stop loving you no matter what. That's the love of a awesome father all the way to eternity no matter what he's going to pursue his kids all the way to the end you will reach the shores of heaven you will enter in and you will be in awe that you made it but you will make it because of him psalm 86 5 for you lord are good and ready to forgive abundant in loving kindness to all who call upon you it says he's abundant in it it overflows. You cannot exhaust the mercy and compassion of our God. Verse 3, second part. Look at this benefit. He says, who heals all your diseases. Heals all your diseases. In this life or the next, we will be healed, no doubt. Look at Job. He was the most righteous man in his city, and he was deathly sick. And Job declared, that's all right. I'll be healed today, or I'll be healed in, in heaven and eternity, it doesn't matter to me. This is fine. This vessel is going to be used for God no matter what. Naked I came in this world, naked I shall go. The Lord gave me health, wealth, and prosperity. The Lord can take it away. No big deal. The Lord gives. The Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Did you even know this disease of baldness? You see, I'm going to have an afro in heaven, Okay. If you want to find me in heaven, you just see that that's Josh over there. How do you know? Well, just look. <laughs> Jerry curls, you know, I'm just like, oh, if it's... Okay, that's enough. <laughs> How can we not bless the Lord? Look at his benefits. Look at verse 4, who redeems your life from the pit. Where would we be had we not found the Lord? The Lord redeems our life from the pit here on earth and in eternity. Without Christ, we are headed for hell on earth, truly. And it's sad. We see people actually have some hell on earth. It's so sad. Jesus said in John 10.10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy you. But I have come to give you life, and that abundantly. I get a relationship with God, heaven for eternity, all the benefits of him. And then I get to catch waves, drink good coffee, and enjoy my family and good friends. Man, I'm blessed. We're unbelievably wealthy in him. The Lord has redeemed us and saved us from destroying ourselves. He's also re re redeemed us and saved us from hell for eternity. Did you know that? Do you know why hell is so bad? It's because we would be separated from God forever. The one who is light, joy, love, peace, righteousness, good, pleasure, fun, rest. He's the one who's redeemed us. And Jesus said he's making a home for us in heaven. In his father's house are many mansions. He exchanged your hell with, for heaven with him. In a castle, in a kingdom, in a redeemed perfect place forever. It's ultimately the earth completely redeemed and restored. No more death, no more crying, no more suffering, no more pain. A redeemed earth. Sunsets forever. The thousand foot wave. Yeah. 
enjoying the Lord, feasting forever, the way it was supposed to be. All the things that we love and enjoy on this earth, amplified by a million. Verse 4, who crowns your life with steadfast love and mercy. Do you know how much God loves you? John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That's how much he loves you. He gave his only son for you. That whoever would believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. He loved you so much, he gave his own son for you. That's how much God loves you, whether you feel it or not. He crowns you with this love. With forever steadfast love and mercy. But I don't feel worthy. And I'm not very faithful, and I drop the ball all the time, and I sin over here, and I do this. And that's right, he pursues you with his love day and night. He doesn't waver. He's a good God. Amen. You know, I can see this with my kids. What, no matter what they do, it doesn't change my love for them. I don't know, I can't even explain to you why, but the depths of my love for them is impossible to calculate. And I can't tell you why it's there. It just showed up. And I love them because I love them because I love them because I love them because I love them. I'm proud of them. Even the, my little guy, Shep, he hasn't done anything yet. I'm already proud. Because I love him. And there's nothing he can do to break my love for him. And I'm an earthly father. How much more the heavenly father? Trying to use up God's love is like you trying to drink all the water in the ocean. You can never do it. He has more love and forgiveness and grace than you could ever use. And he just gives it freely. Why and how can he do that? Verse 5, who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. God's presence fills you with straight up good, it says. Who satisfies you with good. So that you are refreshed and renewed with good. I love this. A refill, please. Can I get a refill of good? And the Lord just pouring it out. Thank you, Lord. It's my morning coffee. This morning, I need goodness from the Lord who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Amazing. Isaiah 40, 31. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They'll run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. Who? Those that wait upon the Lord, he will satisfy you with good. Verse 6, the Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. The Lord watches over and protects his people. Nobody's getting away with anything on the earth. Praise God there's a judge. And praise God we're with him. Look at these benefits. Look at verse 7 and 8. He has made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love. Merciful, gracious, slow to anger with his people. Patient with us. He never loses it. He's gentle and lowly. Learn from him. My frustration can just start, you know. My patience can run thin very quickly. But God just sits there and like he should have wiped us out a long time ago, the crazy things we're doing here on the earth. But he is a patient king, not willing that any should perish, but all would come to repentance. He's long suffering towards us. His continual unwavering love for his people abounding, overflowing with a steadfast love for his kids. Look at verse 9. He will not always chide, nor will he keep his anger forever. He does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. One of the most amazing verses in all of Scripture. He does not deal with us according to our sins. He does not repay us according to our iniquities. Then what does he do? He paid Jesus according to my sins. He paid Jesus according to my iniquities. He wrote a check to him and said, death. You will make payment for him, and I get to go free. He, repa he repaid his son, Jesus, for my sins. He lets us go free. How can this be? Jesus paid for our iniquity. Jesus paid for our righteousness, and we get to receive it all. He let you go free, and he lets you go free again and again and again today, forgiven. How can this be? He's a great king. He loves his people. Look at verse 11 and 12. 
David writes and he sings, For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As high as the heavens are above the earth, he loves his people and he removes our sin. And as far as the east is from the west, in infinitely removes our transgressions. Some of you need to hear this today. That God has forgiven you. He loves you. And it's gone. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed your sin. When people wrong us, it's very hard for us to remove that from our minds. And God is perfectly willing and capable to hold on to our sin for all of eternity and to hold it against us. Why would he make statements like this in his scriptures? As far as the east is from the west, he removes. And as far as the heavens are above the earth, so his love is for his people. David gives us a picture to help us understand verse 13. He says it's the same as a father shows compassion to his children. So the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. I love my kids deeply. Like I said, there's nothing they can do to lose that love. I'm going to love them no matter what. I'm going to pursue them all the way to heaven. I will go into eternity chasing after them. And I can't tell you why. I probably won't pursue anybody else on the earth like that. And that gives you insight into the heart of your father. He will pursue you. He will find you. He will forgive you. He will love you. He will pour grace on you. He will restore you, Peter. He's making all things new. He has a plan for your life. And then David helps us understand. Verse 14, for he knows our frame. He remembers that we are dust. God knows who we are. He still makes the deal with us no matter what. We're just a bunch of dirt bags, huh? Let's be honest. <laughs> he knows our frame. He remembers that we are but dust. Remember? Back to the Garden of Eden. He formed us out of the dust of the ground. We're just dust. He knows our frame. He knows that we're fragile. And this is what trips me out. God knows your frame... He knows what you're capable and not capable of. He knows where you're going to fail. He knows what you're going to do and not going to do. He knows your frame, and he still puts his hands out and says, you want to do a deal? And you're like, Lord, I got, um, I got some chapstick. <laughs> I got some lint and a paper clip, and I maybe got like 15 bucks in the account, you know? That sounds great to me. You want to do the deal? That God would do the deal with you. He knows your frame. He remembers that you are but dust. But he still does all of this. Amen. I believe it's just about the worst business deal on paper ever made. Watch this. How much has God invested into us? Did Jesus not pay off the entire debt? Did Jesus, the blood of Christ, not pay for his church? Was, was not the payment exponential he overpaid and he gives us all the benefits he paid out everything and how much will God get back in return from us how much will God get back out of us we are sometimes faithful we sometimes have right motives we sometimes live lives worthy of the king few days sinless but he still paid a full price for these broken vessels that he fills and uses for his glory and that's the beauty of the gospel is that it's not about you. It's never been about you. He just, he uses broken people and he fills them and he does magnificent things in his people. God pays everything and all he gets from me in return is this guy. But he still paid full price. And he gives us all the benefits anyways and they aren't ever going away. How great is our God? I'm telling you, you know, th this, this has not been a perfect church. I'm not a perfect guy. I took, just took a step of faith to see what God might do. 
over many failures and messing up and all of the things God just still keeps refilling and using. And by the grace of God, I stand here today. It's, it's really incredible when you step back and see what God will do in your life, even though you really know yourself. You know who you are, right? And he says, I'm still doing the deal. And I'm going to use you to do incredible things you could never imagine. What is our response to all this? David does it for us. Look at this. Look at the psalm, verse 15. As for man, his days are like grass. He blooms like a flower on the field, and when the wind passes over it, it vanishes. And its place remembers it no more, but from everlasting to everlasting, the loving devotion of the Lord extends to those who fear him and his righteousness to their children's children. He will extend his hand, church, to our kids and our grandkids and our great-grandkids. God will extend the same deal to our kids, to our grandkids, and to our great-grandkids. Amen? Praise God. We, we have a legacy that actually will go into the future to those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts as we will teach our kids and train our kids to love the Lord and walk with him. He will keep his covenant. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. The chorus of David's song. Here it is. So you musicians, you just got the verse, right? It's starting to build. A little pre-chorus hitting right there. And boom, here we go. The chorus is about to ring. It's about to take off. This is it. Because all of, the Lord, all of a sudden, the, the Lord has done all of this for me. Can you believe this? Soul, listen up. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name. David sends this thing, verse 20. Bless the Lord, all his angels, mighty in strength, who carry out his word, who hearken to the voice of his command. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, you servants who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name. The church has always been about him. It will always be about him. And the best thing we could do is just get out of the way, figure that out early, and just start lifting him up. And as we lift people up to Jesus, let me rephrase that, as we lift Jesus up, he will draw all men to himself. And our job is to help those people come to him. That's it in the end. And that's all we've done. I was talking with Aaron about this, talking with the guys about this. Like, after the pandemic, you know, the church got gutted. We went down to like 40 people. And we had to start all over. And I was like crushed. You know, I'm like, are you kidding me? I don't want to do this again. Like, you can't do this. God, this is not fair. This is not part of the deal. <laughs> like, I had a plan, okay? I know the thoughts I have for you, says Josh Thompson, right? <laughs> And the Lord said, no, I got a different way. I got a different plan. And literally I had to pull the rug, go all the way down again, and then start all over with an amazing, incredible family, leadership, and servants in this church. Everybody puts their head down and just keeps going forward. And nothing really has changed. Like, we just do the same thing every week. We come in here and pray, and we worship, and we call people to repentance. We baptize. We try to make disciples. We preach the word. We hang out in community. And that's it. We throw parties. It's kind of like, what do you guys do? Like, this is, this is what you see. That, that's a real gym floor right there, and that's a real carpet we put down. Yeah, it's a basketball hoop, Yeah. We just started chipping away, just doing the same things. And praise God, Acts 2, the Lord adds to the church daily those who are being saved. Amen? So this is a celebration of him. And uh, where would I be? Where would we be had he not found us? Had he not called us? It's incredible to step back after God has given so much to us and still uses us 
Maybe you're asking the question, what can I possibly give to him when he has everything? Listen, the only thing God wants from you is you. A deep relationship with his creation. That's all he wants. That's all he's ever wanted. That's what it was in the garden. And that's what we're trying to get back to, just being with him. Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Amen? So Jesus died. That's what he paid for on the cross. That's what the resurrection is all about. It's about getting us back to him. And that's all he wants, is you near to him. And so seek the Lord while you may be found. If you seek me, you will find me, God says, if you seek me with all your hearts. And that's the message I want to trust you today. I want to tell you who God is, and I want to tell you to run to him with all of your heart and watch what he might do in your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's all stand up. I want to pray for us. We will sing together, and then we will feast. What do you say? Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for all that you have done in this place. This church belongs to you. It always has. You helped us. You were there in the beginning. You'll be there in the end. You'll be there in eternity. And so, Lord, we entrust the church back into your hands. And we ask, Lord, that you'd bless us another 10 years. You would sustain your people. You would fill us with your Holy Spirit. That you would draw us to obedience that our obedience before you of just loving you and loving the people around us, living in righteousness, would shine so bright into this city. It would lighten this place up. It would save people. People would see our good works and literally give glory to our Father who is in heaven. Lord, we pray for that in our own lives. I pray, God, that we would all draw close to you on this day and celebrate the greatness of what you have done. Bless legacy. Let your hand of blessing be on us. Let your favor be on us in this city. Go before us. Please continue to give us all that we need. Carry us through. We love you, Lord. We dedicate and commit the church back into your hands once again. We do it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, amen.